Hello YouTube and welcome to the next Tax Laws video with a brand new Apple iPad 6th generation or iPad 2018. This time we are going to do the setup. This is the Wi-Fi version if you got the 4G LTE version. You first have to insert your nano SIM card into the device and then hit the on on off button on top of the device. Push it, keep pushing it, push it until you see the Apple logo. Then, while the device boots, you can check out the screen if you got some uh, display errors, if you got some dead pixels, if you got some yellow stripes on the screen, all those things that you don't want in a brand new Apple device. Next step is you choose your language and no, if you purchased an Apple Pencil with your know, iPad, uh, you can't use a pencil yet. You have to operate the device with your fingers. So, I choose now English, I say I'm in Germany. So the device is setting language uh, and country. And then I got the possibility to do a quick start. So if I got any other iOS devices which are running iOS 11, I can use them to send over my Apple ID, my Wi-Fi password, so that I can just save a couple of minutes and I don't have to do all those steps. But I will show you how to do all those steps. Uh, steps. So I say set up manually. And first thing I have to do is choose a Wi-Fi. So I'm at home, I select my Wi-Fi and then enter my Wi-Fi password. Then I get some Apple information about data and privacy. I just hit continue. And then it's a question if I want to use Touch ID, Apple's fingerprint scanner, which is located inside the home button. I want to use that, so I hit continue. Place the finger on the home button. And don't push the home button. Just lift your finger up and down, up and down. Do this a couple of times and then the Apple, uh, the iPad will tell you to move your finger. So adjust your grip. Then start moving your finger around. Make sure that you scan the sides a little bit down, a little bit up. Uh, the sides of your finger as well. And then you're done. So you hit complete. And this is the thing I don't like about the setup here. I can't directly scan another finger. I have to add another finger later in the settings uh, if I'm already done to do setting up the device. So in case my finger is hurt, is lost or something, or another person should uh, unlock the, the iPad for me, I have uh, to, to enter another PIN or password or passcode to, to be able to unlock the device without a fingerprint. The, um, Apple is uh, recommending six numbers, but you can change this. Hit passcode options and you can turn this down to a four digit numeric code where I just say one, two, three, four. Uh, Apple is warning me this is not really safe. I know that, but anyways, I want to use it. So I enter it again you have to confirm it. And then you're at the point where you have to choose. Do you want to set this device up as a brand new iPad? Then only around five gigabytes of storage will be uh, will be lost, I have to say. Uh, or if you want to use, move data from an Android device, or if you want to restore an iCloud or iTunes backup, iTunes backup from a PC or Mac, or iCloud backup from Apple's uh, cloud services. I'm going to do to restore now something out of the cloud because I got an older iPad. I've already done a backup and I now will just uh, move all the stuff that's saved in the cloud from this device. Um, and then I will be able to use the new iPad as it would be my old iPad, only better, better faster and more iPad-y. So I hit restore iCloud backup. Then I have to enter my iCloud Apple ID email and the password. If you have set up two-factor authentication, uh, then there will be a pop-up on another device where you have already logged in with the exact same Apple ID. There you will see a number that you have to enter in your new iPad. This is only a, a sec, uh, another way to secure this device is that only you will know or you will be able to log into your Apple ID account uh, with your brand new device and no, no one else. So then you have to agree to the terms and conditions and if you decline or if you disagree, uh, everything you have done until this point will be lost because you only can use the Apple iPads if you agree with the terms and conditions. So you have to agree. And then I can choose an iCloud backup from another device. I have here the iPad 2017 backup I just made with the iPad 5th generation. I select this one. And then I have to enable, or I will be asked if I want to use the location services, yes or no. I say yes. 
And then the question is if I want to send uh, Apple iPad analytics to Apple, you can share this data anonymously with Apple or don't share, it depends on you. And then the device will restore from the iCloud. This will take a couple of minutes. After a reboot, I have to enter my code. This is always the, the, the case. If you rebooted Apple device, you have to enter your codes and after that the Touch ID will work again. And now the iPad will be starting to install all the previous apps, the same apps at the same location, which were on the previous iPad. Uh, so this is it. Now we do a cut and I tell you a little bit, oh no, before that, uh, if you have an Apple Pencil and you want to use it with your new iPad, uh, just plug the Apple Pencil in your new iPad via the lightning uh, port. Yes, I know, this looks definitely silly. This is the way the Apple Pencil will be connected. If you want to do this, for the, if you connect it for the first time, you just hit connect and then both devices know each other and now you can use the Apple Pencil with your new iPad. And now we will do the cut. There we go. I did the setup of the new Apple iPad 6th generation device at around noon. Now we got 8 p.m. And I used the device in the last couple of hours continuously. I did everything with the device. I also recharged it a little bit to get the, accu the battery life going. And I'm now giving you an uh, intensive first impression of the device. So step number one, uh, how about um, which apps are pre-installed and, and uh, how much pre-storage do we got? I only installed a couple of apps. I ins installed Reader, uh, Sparks for email, then Prime Video from Amazon, Netflix and YouTube for the videos and for the productive stuff I used Microsoft's OneNote and OneDrive and Google's uh, Numbers. And if you head over to Settings and you look at uh, uh, iPad storage, you can see 10.5 uh, gigabytes are already used of the 32 gigabytes. But if you calculate the uh, Office and the iLife apps from Apple, uh, which gives you around four gigabytes of used space. So you got around six to seven gigabytes that are used out of the box if you get rid of those Apple big Apple apps. And this is a fantastic number, I would say. So you can delete those apps or you can use them, but out of the box, the 32 gigabyte device should give you enough storage for around 80, 90% of you guys. Next step, uh, display. We got the same PPI numbers, 264, as on every other iPad. Of course, we got a lot of reflections here, but if you turn up the brightness, uh, you can compensate for that. Uh, you still see your reflections, but on normal conditions, at home, at work, on the go, it's still enough brightness power to, to operate the device. If you're out in the bright sunlight, uh, then it's hard. I'd already tested it in bright sunlight and so the iPad 2018 is no device I would take to the beach to read there a little bit. No, definitely not. But uh, normal day use is no problem. Viewing angles are fine, colors are fine and if I'm listening to a video I have no problems as well. Uh, viewing, the, viewing the video and listening to the speakers. Speakers give you a normal fantastic sound. Stereo speakers on one side, if you turn them up, you get a little vibration on the device. Yes, you do, but nothing to worry about. If you're going to do game a little bit with the device, I'm pretty sure, I've not tested it, but I'm pretty sure shouldn't be any problem. So this is it, this is display. Let's talk about camera. I've already tested the camera out. I have to say the 8 megapixel camera on the back side uh, it gives you okay pictures and okay videos. I tested it under uh, really nice conditions and the results are okay, or, uh, good, good. But the front facing camera with 1.2 megapixels, this is no, 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 this is not even good enough for selfies. Don't think about Instagramming with the device. No, not with the front camera. They can feel, really feel that this is a cheap iPad or this is the cheapest iPad Apple have ever made so far. So what else? Of course, you all are curious about the pencil. Yes, you can use the Apple Pencil and I've already tested this with OneDrive from Microsoft and writing here is no problem at all. This works, this works fantastically. Um, I prefer, I would like, really like to have a combination out of the Microsoft OneNote app, which gives me way too many options 
and the Apple Notes app, which gives me a little bit two less options. And I have to say, if you start drawing here or if you're tracking uh, whatever you do, uh, handwriting is okay. This is my handwriting. Oh, I should maybe do this in English. Hello there. So, uh, writing is no problem. Uh, latency is no problem. Uh, of course, I have tested this or compared it a little bit with the Apple iPad Pro. Uh, I only got one Apple Pencil and you always has, have to uh, reconnect to each other. Uh, you have to plug them in and uh, reconnect uh, to each iPad. You can't use one Apple Pencil on both devices at the same time. No, you have to reconnect. Uh, this is just for your information. And maybe the uh, Apple Pencil works on the iPad Pro a little bit faster. But in terms of accuracy or so I, I can't see any any differences here and drawing and writing no no problems at all uh, this is just works perfectly and even my palm uh, recognition so you rest your palm on the device on the screen and it's no problem here that you that you write and write and write and write and write uh, without getting the display confused. So yes, the Apple iPad 2018 works really, really nice with the Apple Pencil. Then let's talk about, oh, one thing maybe I have to mention because um, of the design. If you got a white background or something whitish like, like, okay, just grab the Notes app. You can see a black border between the display and the white frame. This is because of the construction of how the display, how they are made. If you think this black border or this black frame will distract you, there's a solution for that. Just get the white, uh, get the black iPad. They won't see any black borders because the frame is also black. Then, and the thing I don't understand, then you get the Panda Edition with a black iPad and a white Apple Pencil. And I can't explain to myself why Apple is not bringing out black Apple Pencils. Black Apple Pencils or even colored Apple Pencils. This would be so great, so nice. Or even maybe a smaller version of the Apple Pencil as well. But no, Apple does not want to do that. So, this were the very first impressions of the new Apple iPad 2018. Uh, now a lot of people are asking me, should I get one? I have to say, if you get the seven, 2017 version, or even get the Apple iPad Air 2, I wouldn't switch. Even with an Apple iPad Air first generation, I maybe would not switch if the device still runs okay for me. Of course, the iPad first generation Air first generation can be a little bit slow sometimes. Loading big big apps, switching between between apps, yes. But if it still works, I mean, yes, everything will run smoother on this device. But still, hmm. if you're now in the market for buying a new iPad, then yes, definitely get with go with a new one. Definitely in terms of updates, in terms of. Um, everything definitely get with the new 2018 device um, i would even consider um, if there are some 2017 models in them still in the market that are now being sold cheaper for maybe 50 euros or 50 bucks less i still will pay the 50 euros more for the apple pencil thing for the new pro uh, cpu thing definitely yes definitely i would recommend the 2018 model uh, or maybe you just wait one or two months uh, and then they will should be get some great offers with the 2018 as well. And now the big question: What about the iPad Pro? Uh, then you have to keep in mind that the iPad Pro nearly costs double the price of the iPad 2018, uh, around 320 euros more. But you have to keep in mind that you to get double the storage: 64 gigabyte, 32 gigabytes of storage. And normally, double the storage costs you 100 euros more. For an iPad from Apple, so then you got only the only a difference of 230 euros. Uh, we have to say those 230 euros are definitely worth the money because you get more performance, you get four speakers, you get the bigger screens, you get the better screen, you get the true view, and you get the 120 hertz. Then you get the 4K camera. So there are enough points where I think and more RAM, where where the, you get worth the money definitely yes but but if you only want to have an ipad if you don't even care about the apple pencil you just want something you want to browse you want to check your emails you want to hang on your sofa and check your surf the web you play some games 
then the iPad 2018 is definitely enough device for you and enough device, enough iPad for the next three, four, five years without any questions. So this is it guys. Thank you for watching and I see you all in the next video. Bye.